Lightroom is quite capable of converting the file types for you. A lot of times your camera is going to shoot RAW or JPEG, but those may not be the file types you need to deliver. Particularly RAW files, which can be very difficult to view on the web or share with non-photographers. As such, you're going to need to convert the file when you export. When you're done with the edit, it's pretty simple. This file is already edited and ready to go. Just choose File, Export. This is going to allow you to choose what you export. Generally speaking, you'll get the most control by exporting to the hard drive. Now, scroll down a little bit, and you should see a category here called File Settings. Clicking Image Format will show you the choices supported by Lightroom. Now, these first few choices are going to be raster-based. JPEG is well suited for the web and okay for printing. A Photoshop document or a TIFF file are much higher quality and are going to work best for documents that you intend to print or want to hand off for additional editing in another tool. The PNG file is a larger data rate type image that's also compatible with the web. The other choice, DNG, is a digital negative. DNG is going to allow you to rewrap the RAW file into the Adobe digital negative format. This will allow you to transfer it to other users who can work with RAW files, and if they stay within the Adobe ecosystem, the edits that you make should be handed off correctly, and they could use those. And even if not, the DNG file can still be read by many other applications. The last option is original format. This means just keep it exactly the way it was, but apply any of the edits that I did to this and put it on disk. If it's a RAW file, original format's a little bit tricky because you can't actually apply the edits. Now, let's go ahead and save this as a Photoshop document. I can now specify the color space. Generally speaking, Adobe RGB is going to work best, but Profoto is another professional option if you intend to do a lot of editing. I would suggest, however, you pay attention to the bit depth. This is the amount of information used to describe color. If you are going into Photoshop or printing, 16-bit is so much better. Most digital cameras these days shoot 10, 12, or even higher bit depth images. So going all the way back down to 8-bit throws away a tremendous amount of information that can be used to reproduce the color. When everything is all set, just look it over. You can also decide if you want to resize. In this case, I'm not going to do any resizing. I'm going to let it be full quality. And you can decide whether or not to apply sharpening. I usually suggest a little bit here. If you intend to do further processing, like we're going to take this into Photoshop, then I would just uncheck that. When you're all set, click Export, target your hard drive, and write the file, and it's saved to disk. You can track its progress in the upper corner here with the Export File dialog. You'll see what happens as it moves through, and depending upon the edits and what you've done, this may take a little bit of time or go quite quickly. In the future, if you need to, you can also save time and quickly reuse these settings. So if you have another file that you need to export, no big deal. Just choose File, Export with Previous, and it's going to reuse those exact same settings. Now you could target and save it in that location, and it will reuse the last settings that you configured for the new image. This is great if you have a lot of files that you need to export, but you're working on them over time or browsing through different folders, finding them, you can still export in a consistent way.